No more paradise islands at the equator and no more mountain ski resorts, no beaches or small quiet villages. Hurricanes and typhoons of incredible power sweep away everything in their path. Wars have become even more destructive. One nuclear warhead can destroy half of the world's population. Sounds like the plot of another disaster movie, doesn't it? But I'm talking about the possible future of our planet. In less than 10 minutes, you'll find out why what's happening right now under our feet can destroy our entire familiar world. Why might the dense Amazon rainforest disappear completely, while normal winds cause millions of deaths? And what does the route from Antarctica to Uruguay have to do with it? Almost from the 150 million square kilometers or 58 million square miles of land, 361 million square kilometers or 139 million square miles of water. This is exactly what the Earth was about 300 million years ago. At that time on our planet, there were no islands nor separate continents. Only the supercontinent Pangaea and the huge ocean of Panthalassa. Then Pangaea began to disintegrate, and after hundreds of millions of years of slow movement of the lithospheric plates, we got the familiar Earth we know now. However, this process didn't stop. It continues to this day. The planet gradually changes its appearance every second. You likely won't notice this without special instruments, but 300 million years will pass and you'll no longer recognize Earth. Christopher Scotese, a geologist and paleontographer at the University of Texas at Arlington, made a hypothesis about Neo-Pangaea. If you believe the scientists, then over time, the movement of the continents will lead to the formation of a new supercontinent. It's called Pangaea Proxima. To see how this will happen, you'll have to fast forward. The Atlantic and Indian Oceans will continue to expand until all continents come together in one place. It's very likely that most of them will collide with Eurasia. But first, North America will move to the west, Eurasia to the east. Perhaps Great Britain will approach the North Pole, and Siberia will move south towards warm subtropical latitudes. It will become unusually hot and humid there. Africa is expected to collide with Europe and the Arabian Peninsula. The Mediterranean Sea will disappear altogether. In its place, huge mountain peaks will form, which may significantly exceed Mount Everest. California will be right against or very close to Alaska, also creating new mountain ranges. Then, the Atlantic Ocean will begin to shrink. Antarctica will move to the north towards Madagascar. In the end, North America will collide with Africa, and South America will, as it were, embrace it from the south. By this time, the Pacific Ocean will be so huge that it will take up half the Earth. Of course, this isn't the only scenario for the formation of a supercontinent. The world will change completely. Paul Valdez, a climatologist from the University of Bristol, believes that life on the future supercontinent will be extreme. Earthquakes, volcanic activity, tsunamis and asteroids – all this would continue to threaten humanity. But the likelihood of being destroyed by something like this would become much less. Much less, that is, than the likelihood of becoming a victim of an incredibly powerful hurricane. The winds of which can destroy even the strongest skyscraper. If a supercontinent forms at the end of an active volcanic phase, then the atmosphere will be rich in carbon dioxide. As a result, there will be such global warming that it will even warm the oceans and we'll have a planet with raging hypercanes. These huge tropical cyclones are 50% more powerful than the worst hurricanes of our time. Forget about the light breeze that may be blowing outside your window. The winds will be hundreds of times stronger. To give you even a rough idea of such power, here is an example. The Category 5 Hurricane Irma reached a wind speed of 285 kilometers per hour, or 180 miles per hour. 
the north coast of Cuba was hit by waves up to 11 meters or 36 feet high. Not the biggest ones in history, but hardly anyone would want to be nearby. Then, in Florida, a major natural disaster was declared. Millions of people were evacuated. As a result of the hurricane, the economic damage amounted to more than $77 billion. Now, multiply all this by one and a half. Wind speed, waves, damage, and similar natural disasters will occur on Neopangea all the time. Perhaps, with the dividing of territories in such conditions, problems will arise. There's no time for agriculture and various forms of production. But just think how much energy can be obtained with the help of wind generators. So, you think that humanity is somehow too belligerent today? Oh no. Conflicts on Neopangea will become commonplace. Humans are capable of inflicting much more harm on themselves than nature. Today, mankind has fighter jets, intercontinental ballistic missiles, drones, various chemical weapons. The number of threats that can send you to meet your late great-grandmother is increasing every year. Add here nuclear weapons or some particularly dangerous strain of virus. And this is only the weaponry that exists today. But what will they come up with in the future? A world in which countries are not separated by seas and oceans, where you have to constantly fight for resources and habitable territory. Yes, this is some kind of ancient world. Correction, an ancient world where there are nuclear warheads and the population density is such that almost any infectious disease risks becoming a pandemic. And hurricanes. Don't forget the constant hurricanes as a bonus. But I haven't even covered all the climate issues. To form Neopangea, the continents are likely to shift from the poles to the equator and very much change their position. This means that many countries will have a truly hellish climate. Tropics in the United States? Easy. Desert instead of Brazil? Yes, you have to get used to that too. Portugal under ice? On Neopangea, even this could be possible. Nigeria and Morocco would also be very cold. And the climate in Spain would no longer be different from Iceland's. However, why are we talking about bad things all the time? A single supercontinent would still have its advantages. For example, travel. From the noticeably warmer Antarctica, Uruguay could be reached on foot. And from Mexico to South Africa, just catch a ride. True, it's better not to dream of any vacation on the Italian coast. Unless, of course, you're a fan of extremely low temperatures. It will be quite frosty in Italy in 300 million years. Okay, let's be honest. If Pangaea still existed or formed again, you would hardly be happy about it. Yes, me too. Terrible scenario, to be honest. The fact that Christopher Scotese's hypothesis is just that. And no one really knows what the movement of lithospheric plates will lead to for the inhabitants of the Earth. The best news in this video. Perhaps you'll be glad that fish and other sea life feel much better in the vast ocean. After all, people will not have to cross it to get somewhere, which means less pollution and other negative impacts. But no, life in the oceans is directly linked to currents that oxygenate the water and provide other nutrients. The currents depend on the location of the continents, and if they all gather in one place, currents may cease to exist. No currents, no oxygen. Few creatures can survive in such water. Of course, I could have made a mistake during my research. I'm just a guy on the internet trying to tell you that science is very interesting. Maybe some of you, after watching my videos, will get so carried away by all this that you'll make an amazing discovery one day. Maybe even construct a rocket that will send us to the distant borders of the universe. But you won't envy those who will live on our planet. Because, well, I won't get ahead of myself. This is the topic of one of my next videos. In the meantime, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and click on the bell. This way, you definitely won't miss anything.